Welcome to SQL Server Denali, always on NextGen HDR Solution. In this series of video, uh, we are setting up Hyper-V to test uh, the Denali features of availability groups and client virtual failover. This is the last video of series where we'll go ahead and implement and test virtual name feature of Denali. Well, I'm on the node 21. So let's go and check how the cluster is seeing the availability group. So here is the cluster. You can see current owner node is 22 because 22 is the primary at this point. Click on the QDC AG node. So this is QDC AG group. Uh, we'll go ahead and configure the cluster virtual name. To do that, click on add a resource. Click on the first client access point. Type an address 29 AG. Uh, We'll give it a name QDC VSQL as the virtual name. Click next. Click finish. So we just successfully configured it. Now go ahead and disable the QDC AG group. Now right click on the group and click on properties. Go to the dependencies of this group and add a dependency. So pick the virtual name as the dependency. Click apply. Say okay. Now it is applied. Now start the QDC AG group. It should automatically start bring the IP resource online as well. All right. So we have everything up. QDC vSQL is the name you can connect to. Go ahead, QL, click next, hooray, as you can see we are connected, let's see where we are connected, management, availability groups, we are connected to primary, that's 22, to validate it, let's open a connection with this. Server name, click execute. We are on QDCDB 22. Now, this is how the client is connected. It's connected to QDC vSQL. What we'll do is, since 22 owner will go to 21 and do a force failover. I'm clicking on force failover. Once the failover is completed, on the same window, I should be able to connect and see QDC 22 to be changed to 21. Click force failover, say OK. Failover completed successfully, click OK. Let's go back to the same window. Now, it's very important to note that are you getting any kind of error message here? And QDC DB 22 is changed to 21 or not? Click execute. As you see, there are no errors for the client. It does not even give one timeout error as well. You continue to remain the session. Your session did not get killed. You run the query next time. It automatically got executed on DB21. And this is why. So if client is retrying in between when the failover is happening for a couple of seconds, uh, it will be denied. And after it retry again, it will be able to see the name. It will be able to connect to database without any issues. In this video, we created a virtual name for SQL Server. We are able to connect to virtual name to, from SQL Server and we are able to validate a force failover. And with the force failover happening, not only the existing connections was up and running, it did not even see a disconnection. So for applications, it's going to be a seamless behavior where for when they try, it's just that the connection was not working for first time when the failover is happening. If they try it again, they'll be able to connect. In failover clustering, you must have noticed if the SQL Server is switched, a failover happen, all the existing connections will fail. And here, when you run it again, you will see a error saying that the session is disconnected. Try again. And you try it next time, it connects. But with uh, always on, this is an additional feature where the client does not even know that there is a failover happened. 
another thing to note is that uh, it is as simple to install it as a standalone as a failover cluster instance if you want uh, there's no any specific difference which works uh, as a failover cluster instance and doesn't work that way cause the failover cluster instance you configure is as a single node well thank you for watching the video uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, drop an email to me at prakash at sqlfeatures.com please read the video Thank you for watching.